Hey guys, Crypto Dad here again, and today I'm going to show you how to set up the Elipal Titan hardware wallet for cryptocurrency, and I'm also going to show you their new feature on storing and displaying NFTs. So let's get started. All right, let's go ahead and open up our Elipal. It's our new uh, Elipal Titan. Nice piece of machinery. Has everything you need to keep your private key safe and secure. All right, uh, pull this off here. It's pretty cool, they've got this uh, mag charger on the bottom. And here's our power button. Let's see what else we got in here. We'll go ahead and take this out. Got a couple of cool stickers. All right, so we've got our uh, recovery sheets where we're gonna write down our mnemonic words. Uh, this is a uh, human readable representation of the private key. We're gonna generate the private key when we initialize the device and they're gonna give us this backup. So basically the wallet is contained in these words. So please don't show them to anybody else. Keep them in a safe place. Never reveal them to anyone that asks you for them. So if anyone DMs you and says they're from tech support and uh, you might lose all your crypto unless you uh, give them these uh, words, don't believe them. Don't believe any scams. These are your words, your words only. Please write them down and store them in a safe place. And then we've got this little instruction sheet on how we go about uh, getting everything done. All right. All right, so the first thing we'll do is get it charged. All right, it's magnetic. It just uh, attaches like that. Got the other end uh, of this cable plugged into a charger. All right, so you can see there the icons telling me that the battery is empty. So uh, I'll just go ahead and give it some time. All right, this is what it looks like when it's charging. All right, so I've got the Elipal uh, completely charged up. So I'll go ahead and go with the setup. Just gonna power it on here. All right, so uh, we'll start by choosing our language and we can download the Elipal app uh, by scanning this QR code. All right, so I'll just open up the camera on my phone and we'll scan that in. All right, and I can go ahead and go, it takes me right over to the App Store. All right, I'll go ahead and enable notifications and uh, I'll go ahead and download this guy. All right, so here on the uh, Elipal, I'll hit Next and I'm going to create an account uh, we'll give it a name. I can just call this one Crypto Dad. All right, once you've chosen the password, uh, I will leave it at Segwit. That's the latest version here. I won't do a passphrase. I'll go ahead and just use the uh, backup phrase with no passphrase. Adding a passphrase increases security, but it also increases the chance of you losing access to the wallet if you forget the passphrase. It's better to keep it basic and just store the phrase. All right, the account was successfully created, so now I wanna back up my mnemonic phrase. So I'm gonna put my list of words here, and I'll, I'll, the next thing I'll do is I'll tap. Uh, make sure you don't show these to anybody. This is the private key of the wallet in a human readable format in case you lose access to the device and need to restore. So we agree to these three things and we choose backup now and it's gonna show us our backup phrase. We're just gonna write those down. Make sure that you write the numbers uh, that correspond to the list you see. So for number one, we're gonna write in uh, slot number one. For number two, we'll write in slot number two. Notice how they go across like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. Make sure you write them in the right slots. All right, and when you get the first 12 written down, you'll tap next here. All right, and then you just have to tap the words in order. We'll hit verify mnemonic. All right, and then once you've got the wallet set up, there's a connect here. We'll just connect and we'll uh, let the app scan. So we'll do the same thing on the phone. We'll tap that, we'll hit connect. Give it access and we'll just go ahead. Oh, yeah. All right, and uh, if we want to just have it go automatically through all the pages, we can tap autoplay here. 
All right. All right, and then after you've uh, done that, you now have it connected so that you can read the balances of all the coins that you have stored in the wallet. As, as you can see, I don't have anything stored yet. So as I mentioned, uh, the public information uh, that you, you scan, uh, the public addresses of all of the coins that are enabled. So the public information is held on the, the phone and the private information is held on the device itself. So you can make deposits using the app and you won't need access to the device. You only need the device when you're sending crypto out. All right, so the easiest thing to do is to go ahead and uh, just make a deposit of Bitcoin, which is very simple. Just tap on the Bitcoin there and I'll do a receive. That's going to give me the Bitcoin address of the wallet. Copy that into my clipboard. Slide over to uh, an exchange like Coinbase. All right, and then if uh, I have a little Bitcoin in my account, I can send that over to the wallet. So I do have some Bitcoin. I'll just do a withdraw there uh, to a crypto address. I'll go ahead and paste in the address of the Alipal wallet. All right, and then I'll go ahead and send all right, now hit withdraw BTC. I'll put in my two-factor authentication. All right, and that's just going to transfer the Bitcoin from my uh, exchange account into my Elipal wallet. Go back over here. All right, so you can see I made my deposit of Bitcoin into the Elipal wallet. So if I wanted to send Bitcoin out back to the exchange, then I would need the uh, Elipal device to sign my transaction. So let me give you a demonstration of that. I'll go back over to my Coinbase account. This time I'll make a deposit of Bitcoin. All right, and this is the Bitcoin address of my uh, Coinbase account. I'll go back over here and this time I'll do a send to the address of my Coinbase account and I'll just do a maximum. All right, and so what I'm going to have to do is uh, get my device ready here. I'm going to go to the uh, BTC and notice the only functionality in this is uh, signing transactions, right? So I'll hit sign here. I'll enter my password. All right, so basically what I'm doing now is I'm receiving the request from the app by scanning the QR code. All right, so I've scanned that information. I'll hit confirm here. Uh, we'll make sure that the uh, to and from are uh, correct. We can do that. And then uh, we'll hit OK. And now the Elipal has signed the transaction, so I need to scan that with my app. So I'll uh, click this, and then uh, I'll scan that signed transaction. And basically what that does is uh, signs the transaction or authorizes the transaction so that I can send it out from the wallet, right? Notice that I needed the Elipal device in order to sign the transaction. It's just like the head of HR at a big company, right? So the checks can get printed out, but they're not valid until somebody in the company with authorization signs them. So they'll take a big stack of checks into the head of HR and he'll sign all of the checks and that authorizes the payments to go out. The same with Elipal, right? Just think of Elipal as uh, the CFO of your Bitcoin wallet, right? It has to be authorized by the device before Bitcoin can be sent out from your wallet, right? All right, and then we can just hit complete here. There we go. You can see that I have an outgoing transaction in progress that is sending Bitcoin out from the wallet back to an exchange, right? This could just as easily be sending Bitcoin from my wallet to a friend's wallet or uh, from one of from my Elipal wallet to a different wallet, right? Bitcoin transactions are the same. 
no matter where you send them. You just need the receiving address and then you'll uh, use that as your uh, send to, right? All right, so you can see now that the Bitcoin has left the wallet. All right, so I showed you how to put Bitcoin in. I showed you how to get Bitcoin back out again. I'm going to demo some of the new features uh, in the new Elipal app. So uh, one of the new features that they've got is support for NFTs. So uh, that would be in your Ethereum wallet. So I'm going to do a receive and that will give me the address of the Ethereum wallet. Now what I want to do is share this with my desktop. So I'm just going to tap this little icon up in the right and share that address. Right, I'll just go ahead and send that uh, over to my email so that I can uh, get the access to the address from my desktop. All right, there's the email uh, sent from my Elipal wallet with the Ethereum address. So I'm going to go over to my Ledger Live and I'm going to get an NFT that's in one of my wallets. All right, so as you can see, I've got an NFT here in my wallet. I'm going to go ahead and send that over to the Elipal address. So I'll hit send and then I'll paste in the address of my Elipal wallet. Uh, it does say that it can't be verified, but all you have to do is eyeball it. You can look at the address of your Elipal wallet and just make sure it matches. All right. All right. And I'll go ahead and send this NFT over. And if we go back over to the Elipal app, we can check that NFT. Uh, generally, NFTs are held in your Ethereum wallet. That's why I use the Ethereum address. But the Elipal app has a special section for viewing NFTs. Just go back out here to Assets and then just tap where it says NFT. And there's a special area where it allows you to view NFTs that are sent to the Ethereum address. We just tap here and you can see that NFT that I sent from my Ledger wallet here. And if you want to get a better view, you can just tap on it and it shows you a picture of the NFT and gives you all of the information regarding that NFT. So uh, it's a great way to sort of view and manage your NFTs in the Elipal wallet. So if you wanted to send this back somewhere else, and of course you would need to sign the transaction using your Elipal key, just like we did when we did the Bitcoin. So uh, it's a great new feature in the Elipal app for uh, viewing and managing your NFTs. All right, and I should point out that any Ethereum wallet that you have ERC20 tokens or NFT stored in, you're going to want to put some Ethereum in there for gas fees if you want to transfer these out at some point in the future. So an Ethereum wallet works on gas fees and those gas fees are paid by the Ethereum balance in the wallet. So the easiest way to do that, you can just tap on the Ethereum address up here and tap copy and that's going to copy that Ethereum address into your clipboard and then you can go over to any app. In my case I have some Ethereum stored in my Coinbase Pro account. I can just go over to withdraw and then send that over to a crypto address and then we're going to enter in the address of our Elipal Ethereum wallet. All right, I can send a little bit of Ethereum. I would suggest 50 to $100 worth of Ethereum to keep in your wallet in case you want to transfer your NFTs or your ERC20 tokens or anything in the future. All right, so I'll just withdraw a little bit of ETH from my account. All right, and once you've made that transfer, you'll just go back over to your Elipal wallet and confirm that you've received it. All right, and you can see now that I've got a balance of Ethereum in my Ethereum wallet, and that will uh, allow me to use that for paying fees for transfers or swaps or anything like that. Uh, as you noticed, I did it from an exchange. Uh, there are a lot of exchanges that you can use to fund your Elipal wallet with some Ethereum. Uh, you can also transfer it from any uh, Ethereum wallet into the Elipal. 
So just make sure that you've got a little bit of Ethereum in there if you want to manage your uh, holdings and especially your NFTs. So uh, what makes Elipal different than uh, a ledger is that it's air gapped, right? We uh, never connect a cable to this unless we're charging or updating. Uh, and then when we're signing transactions, we scan with the app and uh, it's totally air gapped, right? It never connects to any of our devices directly, right? So that's what makes the Elipal wallet safe and secure. All right, so if you have any questions about anything I did, please throw them up in the comments and I'll do my best to get them answered. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, I would appreciate it. When you subscribe, there's a little bell that you can click that will allow you to be alerted whenever I post new content. Once again, thanks for joining me and hope to see you again soon.